so proud of these guys. It's, it's, it's that loss really told us a lot about ourselves. And we're pushing this cup. It's so hard to stop on the offensive end, and they're so tough on the defensively. So the way they're working together is really awesome. I would refer Jacklich Law Group to anyone that I know because of their professional touch and they get the job done. They get it done timely and they do it right. As you just saw, our clients have trusted us. We need to reward that trust and we have with great results and great service. So call the big dogs right now, don't wait. Find us online at bigdogssmallfirm.com. Sweet victory tonight, 24-13 with a few minutes left here at uh, Homewood. Uh, Terps have just run away with this game. It's a running clock right now, so it's virtually impossible for Northwestern to come back. But Todd, it was a, another cast of characters tonight, all right, that really put this game away for the Terps as far as the scores go. Well, it was a, it's just that wide range of balance. I mean, I think when, when look, when you scored 24 goals so far, there's eight, still eight minutes to go, eight and a half minutes to go in the game. And you're going to look and you're going to see that, that uh, Brindy Griffin stepped up with six goals. But Jen Giles had multiple goals. Erica Evans had multiple goals. Callie Hartshorn has multiple goals. So you're going to see this breadth of scoring that's the thing that makes Maryland so hard to defend. So does Kelly Amonte Hiller get the uh, Sportsman of the Week? <laughs> she has kept playing on every call, everything. But, you know, it seems to me like as the second half wore on, Northwestern just did not have the depth to stay with Maryland. And, and I think that's why Maryland pulled away. Am I seeing that right? Well, partly, I, I, I think. But, but also, you know, Maryland won draw controls. Um, and, and that's really important. Maryland, Northwestern was able to get a, to hang with Maryland early. They were winning a lot of draw controls. Maryland opened up had, I think, a four goal lead. Um, I, did I sound like Northwestern might have scored? No, no, or, it's another or, save or, by, another by, uh, by Megan, Megan Taylor. Yeah. So um, they, they hung with, with Maryland when they were winning draw controls, but they just don't have the defense. They're not a solid defensive team. They're really built around Skane and Lasota and scoring a lot of goals. And they're good. Oh, they're they're very good. And I'm glad to see Lasota go. She's a senior. Izzy she's one, Skane, is, is, is she a, a freshman? She's a freshman. She was a freshman of the good. year in the Big Ten. But, you know, it was just another one of those. That That's what they're built to do. They're, they're not built to stop teams. And and their goalie, as, they, as she was in the second half of the Big Ten championship, was really just pedestrian tonight to be generous and and Maryland Maryland ran a slightly different offense usually you see a lot of motion and passing and moving the ball and tonight it seemed like they were they were isolating and beating players one-on-one -on -one. and that seemed to be the big offensive adjustment that the Terps made uh, from what I've seen and you've certainly seen more games than me uh, it seemed to me that at some point at the end of that first half Maryland's defense started to take over uh, Northwestern had been penetrating inside the eight meter circle and all of a sudden Maryland like was chipping away and stealing the ball and a few of those they got ahead what it was it four goals at halftime 11 yeah, to 7 I think it was something yeah and Northwestern drew two goals twice but uh, they had more trouble scoring and that's hard to say because they saw 13 goals but these last 10 minutes, they have not been they, able to do anything. Mar Maryland's just just shut them down, and and again, and, and I think I, I mentioned, I said on the, I may have said on the on the radio, uh, you know, if that if Maryland stayed even with with um, with the draws or or won the draws, that they would win the game. But the big moment was for Julia Bragg in the first half, intercepting sure? a pass and scoring the first her goal first goal. Of, she's a senior. As a senior, her first goal of, the, of her career. Right. She was uh, for a while talked about a possible tour time award uh, nominee. That's that's right. And and she was the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. So right, had, the last two years. We had all five of the uh, nominees here today. Anybody right. staying out in your mind? Um, Apuzo had, had a phenomenal game for Boston College. Um, I think the award is is hers to win. Megan Taylor's been been solid. Had a little bit of a rough start. Another but, save. Another save. But she's she's just. I think Northwestern's shooting a little desperate now, and and the saves are coming a little easier, even on the free positions. Uh, but but it just it looks like. 
uh, the, the award is, is a Puzo's to, to win because uh, the, the nominees for Marilyn, Megan Taylor, Jen Giles, uh, Giles had a really lovely season, but the numbers just, you know, because Marilyn's so balanced. You can't have big numbers on, I'm going to say big, I mean huge numbers yeah, on no, a unless team. Unless you're Megan Whittle. Right. <laughs> Where you have seven scores, and even Whittle's numbers, I mean, they were big, don't get me wrong. But uh, listen, here's the bottom line. Let's look forward to Sunday now. Noon, we'll be back here for the game. Todd, uh, Boston College, tell me about the game between Maryland and Boston College last year. Uh, game, 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 la game last year, um, as, I, as I remember it, uh, BC kind of got out to to a, an early lead, and Maryland Maryland came back and they they won the game late on a big play by Apuzo who got and it may have been Bragg to or, or Grace Griffin to trip into the net late in the game that gave them sort of the the two goal margin very late that kind of wrapped up the game for them. So how do you see it going Sunday? Uh, Bruce, you know, we Have talk, you seen enough of Boston College to make that prediction? Right? I, I really haven't, but as, as I've said and uh, talked to a couple people today, said to you, this is this is a desperate group of seniors. The, the three seniors that they've been written about, they've been on the cover of every lacrosse publication. It doesn't mean anything. No, no, but they're, they're, they're they have not yet won any tournament championship. That's they haven't won an ACC championship. They've fallen short the last two years in the Big Ten. I mean, in the NCAA title game, and they're playing with a mission that because this is their last chance. All three of them are done after the end of this year. All that's well and good, but there's a ton of seniors on this team from Maryland, and I don't. I said it early in the year to you that the seniors with Caroline Steele and everybody in Hartshorn. There's just too much talent here, and uh, to me, unless, I'm not gonna lie, I've not seen BC play, but I have seen Maryland play, I know they're seniors, and Megan Taylor has got to be the difference here. Well, and, again, also the draw circle. They're gonna go, Apuzo is every, every bit as good as... Uh, Hearts, Hearts Horn? No, no, she, she's every bit as good as this kid for Northwestern, uh, whose name is just floated out of my head. Um, is it Meyer or something? No. Or well, here, look, here's the bottom line. But if Mar again, I think if Maryland can stay even on draws, then the Terps have, have a really wonderful shot of winning. Let's not forget thing. another thing. This place is going to be rocking in red on Sunday. All right? Hope so. Without question. And, and BC had a nice contingent here. Yeah. But. Uh, and they'll be back. Right, they'll be back. Maryland's going to be, this place will be rocking in red. And. Uh, I tell you what, I don't want to miss the handshake between Kathy and uh, Kelly Monte Hill or Eccles. I'm sticking it's, around late. It's, can... it's rarely the warmest of handshakes under the best of circumstances. Right, Bruce. right. I got a nine o'clock show tomorrow. Todd will be on, of course. Katie May has scored. Katie May's had a great game, being the quarterback behind the net at the X. But uh, let's go about do it. It's, again, this has been the Rick Jackson Law Firm. And the Terps go up with 25 goals, 25-13 as we sign off. The big dog post-game show as we continue. And uh, we also want to thank Viner Four Gates for their sponsorship. And, of course, uh, Meyer Consulting Engineers that's been with us so long. Todd, thanks for taking a few minutes. Thanks, thanks for having me, Bruce, and woof, woof to the woof, big dog. Woof, woof <laughs> to the big dog. He's a happy camper tonight. Terps, 25, Northwestern, 13, three minutes to go. It's academic. Terps and BC Sunday at high noon for the national championship. Let's go, Terps. We'll see you on Terp Talk. Yep. Uh, actually, the Sports Maven tomorrow. Todd will be on during the second uh, second segment. We, we will, as Wayne says, see you on the radio. Okay, so long, everybody.